humans bear the image of God and the notion that sin is real and that we're accountable to God. In fact, when it comes to sin, sin is simply a social construct. In a truly distillological world, there is no good, there is no evil, there is nothing but blind indifference. Distillological evolutionists are atheists. They reject the Christian notions of the incarnation and the resurrection. Their ethics are humanistic. That is, humans decide what right and wrong happen to be. Your best example is the famed Richard Dawkins, who in 2006 wrote The God Delusion, saying that anyone who believes in God is suffering from a delusion. A couple other important individuals are Christopher Hitchens and Daniel Dennett. Let us now summarize by pointing out a few things that we've discovered in the chart. Remember what my central point is in this presentation. I believe we have to get beyond the evolution versus creation debate. I think origins is much more complex than just two positions. In the chart we discovered that there are four creationist positions, that is, positions that believe in a creator. Young Earth creation, progressive creation, evolutionary creation, and theistic evolution. As well, we've discovered that there are at least three evolutionary positions, that is, three positions that believe the world came about through evolution. Evolutionary creation, deistic evolution, and distillological evolution. And if we bring back the previous bar, you will see that there's some overlap. There are two positions that could be called creationist, that is, they believe in a creator, and these two positions are also evolutionary, that is, they accept evolution. A recent study of the nation reveals that 5% of adults are dysteleological, that is, they believe that there is no plan or purpose in the universe. Now what this means is that the great, great majority of us, 95% of us, believe the world has some sort of plan or purpose. In the chart, we also discovered that there are two positions that reject biological evolution, young earth creation and progressive creation. And we also discovered that there are two positions that believe God created the world through evolution. Evolutionary creation, which embraces the God of Christianity, a very personal God. And deistic evolution, that accepts a God that is an impersonal God. Finally, I'd like to point out that there are three positions in the chart that are Christian positions on origins, young earth creation, progressive creation and evolutionary creation. And it's important to note that these three positions are united by the foundational beliefs of Christian faith. Let me show you. These three positions believe in teleology, that is, plan and purpose. And they root plan and purpose in the God of the Bible. These three positions believe in intelligent design. These three positions believe in a personal God who interacts with men and women daily. These three positions believe that the Bible is the Word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. These three positions believe that humans bear the image of God and that humans are sinful. These three positions are conservative Christian positions. They accept the incarnation and the resurrection of Jesus. And finally, these three positions embrace biblical ethics. Now, it's clear that there's debate amongst the three Christian positions in how God created the world, and in particular, how we're to interpret the opening chapters of the Bible, which no doubt about it, these are really challenging chapters to interpret. But let me make a suggestion. Let me suggest that the debates over how God created and how we're to interpret Genesis, let those be a difference amongst us, and never let these become divisions that divide Christians. I think that's a pretty important point from a pastoral perspective. Now, with regards to my views on origins, I'm an evolutionary 
creationist. And in order to understand where I'm coming from, I'll draw your attention back to when I asked you to add some bars around God's activity. And it's important to separate and to distinguish God's activity in creating the world from God's activity in the lives of men and women. And in the light of this categorization, add a little box in the middle of the chart, like this. And this summarizes my views on origins. I believe that God created the world indirectly through ordained and sustained natural processes. More specifically, through his ordained and sustained evolutionary processes. And at the same time, I also experience the Lord in a personal relationship. I experience both dramatic and subtle divine action. Now for those of you who want to learn a little bit more about my personal story, the second lecture in this series entitled Coming to Terms with Evolution, A Personal Story, I'll share with you the struggle, and I'll tell you, I really wrestled. The struggle I had with origins over about a 20-year period, and share with you a few more of the details. Well, I think it's time now to make a few conclusions, and I'll ask you to turn to the front page of your handout down at the lower right column. First, and I'm pretty sure everyone will agree with me, when we get into the origins debate, we need to define the terms and concepts. For example, what does a person mean when they use the word evolution or creation or intelligent design? We need to define these terms so we don't talk past one another. Second, I think we need to recognize that there is a faith jump. The moment someone asks the larger question, what do we make of our scientific discoveries? Both the religious and non-religious person take a step of faith beyond the scientific data to come to their religious and philosophical conclusions. Again, these are ultimate beliefs and they are not science per se. Thirdly, and this is really all I'm arguing in this presentation, is I think we have to get beyond the, and notice I'm using quotation marks, beyond the evolution versus creation debate. I hope I've given you reasonable arguments to suggest that there are way more than just two positions. Consequently, I conclude that the modern origins debate in which there's only two positions being presented is a false dichotomy. And the problem with false dichotomies is it limits your number of choices and traps you in either or and black and white type of thinking. Finally, let me suggest, I think we all have to consider what is known as the two books model. Sir Francis Bacon was one of the fathers of modern science. And in the early 1600s, he said the following, and I've updated the language. Let no woman or man out of conceit or laziness think or believe that anyone can search too far or be too well informed in the book of God's works, that is nature, the physical world, or in the book of God's words, which of course is the Bible the Word of God. Bacon continues, instead, let everyone endlessly improve their understanding of both, that is, the two great books. And that's my hope and prayer for all of us. Thanks for listening.